AI is creating a generation of illiterate programmers. I've been looking forward to reading this article. A couple of days ago, cursor went down. Oh no. During the chat GBT outage, I stared at my terminal facing those red air messages that I hate to see and AWS Air glared back at me. I didn't want to figure it out without AI's help. After 12 years of coding, I'd somehow become worse at my own craft. And this isn't hyperbole. This is the new reality for software developers. The decay. It crept up on me subtly. First, I stopped reading documentation. Why bother when AI could explain things instantly? Then my debugging skills took the hit. Stack traces now feel unapproachable without AI. I don't even read error messages anymore. I just copy and paste them. Wow. Okay. I become a human clipboard, a mere intermediary between my code and an LLM. Previously, every error message used to teach me something. Now the solution appears magically and I learn nothing. The dopamine hit of instant answers has replaced the satisfaction of genuine understanding. Man, I cannot think of a worse way to kill your enjoyment for coding. A lot of software engineers, when we got into this, we enjoyed when we got to the end of the debugging process and achieved those aha moments. You don't have those if you just have AI solve everything for you. I mean, it, it's not even that it's going to create a dependency. It's that it's going to strip your enjoyment from coding. Deep comprehension is the next thing that was affected. Remembering, or remember spending hours understanding why a solution works. Now I simply implement AI suggestions. If they don't work, I improve the context and just ask the AI again. It's a cycle of increasing dependency. Then come the emotional damages. Previously, it was part of the joy of programming to solve new problems. Now I get frustrated if AI doesn't give me a solution in five minutes. The scariest part, I'm building an AI-powered development tool, but I can't shake the feeling I'm contributing to the very problem that's eroding our collective skills. Probably. This is scary. This is really scary. I see this happening, or I hear this happening with um, experienced developers talking about this. And... It really, it's a real thing. Outsourcing your problem solving abilities, um, outsourcing you problem solving, which can help achieve deeper understanding and help just reinforce that love for coding. Like all of the, that gets stripped with dependency. I feel like AI is taking so much away from software engineers that really become over-dependent on it. And that's the key, over-dependency, right? Um, for experienced developers, there's more of an argument to be made on how we can integrate it into our workflow minimally that doesn't strip us of our abilities that we've had to reinforce as developers over the years of coding. Because it's kind of just like um, a lot of these skills look at them like a, a muscle, which atrophies if you don't train it. So, man, that's rough. The rehab plan. I'm not suggesting anything radical like going AI free completely. That's unrealistic. It's not. Holy shit. The fact that you just said that is unrealistic is crazy to me. <sighs> Why not? Why not go back and learn how to look up things on Stack Overflow, learn how to um, take a solution and kind of strip it down and break it to more deeply understand it, uh, reverse engineer it. Why not reinforce syntax through repetition and not having your AI generate code? Why not go through your own debugging process to more deeply understand the problem that you created and further understand the concepts that make up that feature that had the problem in the first place? Why not? Why not go AI free completely? That's crazy to me. 
that you made this statement that's unrealistic, but I'm going to keep reading. Instead, I'm starting with no AI days. One day a week where read every error message completely, use actual debuggers again, write code from scratch, read source code instead of asking AI. I won't lie, it sucks. I feel slower, dumber, and more frustrated, but I can also see the difference. I feel a stronger connection with my code and a sense of ownership, which had slowly disappeared with AI, plus I learn a lot more. I mean, good. This is a start, but get over this. Um, as a professional developer, I understand this plan and having no AI days. So if that's why you're doing it, where you're afraid that you're not going to be able to get features out fast enough to satisfy your team, I can kind of understand this, but man, you are in deep. You are in deep with dependency if you have to, like, do no AI days and you can't just strip it completely. And here's the problem. This isn't a one-off thing. Many experienced developers, if they haven't already, are going to experience this. And when... When you, you get disconnected from the API, when services go down if you can't do your damn job without ai you need to truly analyze your ability and higher ability as a software engineer i mean this person had a wake-up call but there are many that haven't had that wake-up call yet that really worries me the uncomfortable truth. We're not becoming 10x developers with AI. We're becoming 10x dependent on AI. There's a difference. Every time we let AI solve a problem, we could have solved ourselves. We're trading long-term understanding for short-term productivity. We're optimizing for day today's commit at the cost of tomorrow's ability. Well said. I'm not suggesting we abandon AI tools. That ship has sailed, but we need rules of engagement. Okay, I'm listening. Here's some ideas that I have. No AI for problems that you haven't ha or haven't tried to understand first. Okay, fair. Read and understand all AI suggested solutions. Um, how about don't have it solve your problems for you? Have it give you hints. Regular periods of coding without AI assistance, at least bare minimum. Holy shit. This is bad. Focus on learning patterns, not just fixing Im immediate issues. This is like... This is like an addict. Like, obviously not as severe. But, you, you know, like, if you've ever kind of worked with an addict of something, it doesn't have to be drugs. It could be... You could be an addict of a lot of different things. It, it's kind of... Sometimes you go through this process of... Um, negotiating and I'll at least do these little things and in your head when you haven't really faced the addiction you're like you're barely doing anything right like these are really small steps we could do a little bit more I don't know if you've ever kind of um like had an addict in a family where like what I'm trying to illustrate is your perspective you don't have their perspective and you don't have the urge that they have where like these little things are um, like it, it, it's going to require so much effort to do these things when you haven't been depending on AI. These are just like, I don't, I don't want to be condescending. These are just like common sense things. That's like minimum effort to start creating some independence. This is crazy to me. Like this just seems like negotiation when in reality, I think you just kind of need to rip the bandaid off and feel dumb for a month. Just do it. It's going to hurt, but get your ability back. If you have created like a massive dependency, I don't know, man. This feels like bare minimum. Focus on learning patterns, not just fixing immediate issues. I won't lie. I don't think I'll be able to follow these rules all the time. Jeez, oh my. 
Okay, so we can't even do this. That sucks. Like, that is really bad dependency. But it's a start, and I strongly believe anyone who's new to programming should definitely follow all of these rules. You should not even be using AI to generate any fucking code whatsoever or solving anything for you. Now, I'm, I'm serious. Like, at this point, strip it from being able to autocomplete anything for you. Stop this. Like, nip it in the butt now. Allow these conveniences to come later when you built a ton of shit and it's solving some like repetitive stuff that you just have really ingrained but man just i think we got to go to the other extreme and strip it completely the fact that we're even suggesting that like these rules these are like the minimum rules that new developers need to apply no strip it fucking completely rip the band-aid off this is crazy to me that we're even negotiating this Right now, somewhere, a new programmer is learning to code. They'll never know the satisfaction of solving problems truly on their own. Very true. They'll never experience the deep understanding that comes from wrestling with a bug for hours. We're creating a generation of developers who can ask AI the right questions, but can't understand the answers. And I think there are going to be better questions that you do end up asking when you have previous context of not using AI and growing as a software engineer, too. You form better questions by trying to do things the hard way to eventually solve your problem. So I don't even think a lot of new people are asking good questions to begin with. Every time AI goes down, they're exposed as increasingly, um, they're exposed as increasingly helpless. As of now, AI isn't capable enough to replace programmers fully, but this will only get worse as it improves this isn't going to happen anytime soon. Like, if ever. A full replacement? No. The real question isn't whether AI will replace programmers. Okay, it's whether we're replacing ourselves. Ah, that's good. Um, AI will replace developers who are replacing themselves. Yeah. Low-code solution replace or low code solutions and just website builders and um just like cms's replaced developers who were it kind of like it essentially like even indirectly replaced a lot of developers who were just bad right it, it made the bar rise and that's what ai is going to do it's going to make the bar continue to rise and for people that aren't actually becoming good software engineers that are pretending like they're software engineers because they lean heavily on AI and they can create software that real software engineers can create. I mean, just because you're pretending doesn't mean you're a software engineer and these types of people who don't actually want to get good with software engineering are 100% replacing themselves. They are exactly the types of people that will be replaced by AI if and when that ever happens. Try coding without AI for just a day. The results might surprise you. I think this is a really good test. Do this. Do it for a week, not just a day. Do it for a week. Do it for seven days. If it's going to extend into like two, three weeks and um, you're coding like every other day or whatever, like do it for seven days. I, I, I'm telling you, like a lot of people that have leaned heavily on AI are going to feel really stupid and frustrated, and a lot of people are just going to go right back to it. They don't care about that. They like part of growing as a software engineer, especially in the beginning, is feel like realizing you are not brilliant, you are not super intelligent, you are just a normal person that needs to feel fucking stupid for a very long time until you gain confidence through humbling yourself and looking up stuff that you previously didn't know and you just get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better each week over months, over years. And people that are just creating this dependence on AI to help them out of sticky situations and never let them feel that frustration or that stupidity and humble them, these are developers who are in for a world of hurt trying to get into the industry or trying to stay in the industry man um change this to a week and i agree with this so 
Update. This post resonated a lot with the developer community. I am overjoyed and frankly, completely humbled. Here's some interesting statistics. Um, over a million views in one week covered by the Prime Just probably something that kind of gave it a bit of its initial boost, maybe. Um, or no, I think Primogen usually catches things that just become popular, right? An AI educator with 700,000 subscribers on a 27 minute video on YouTube, 2,500 upvotes on Reddit. Um, because this is, you, you know why? Let me finish reading this. Our industry is changing and it's important to discuss the impl implications. I hope my writing made you think. Um, and I can't talk, I bit my tongue and I just recorded a previous video and this video and it just hurts to talk. So I'm sorry if you hear that, but I, I feel like my voice is a little bit weird. Um, anyways, I think people really love this article because this is humility. Like good software engineers understand what it takes to become a good software engineer. And there have been instances like this where people just literally copy and paste solutions and don't really grow as a software engineer. Like this is not a new issue. And people that would do stuff like that, that wouldn't really grind things out and go through the rough process of research and looking stuff up and developing a really good debugging process, which evolves with a variety of projects, a variety of problems that you encounter. People that would not do that never ended up really making it into the industry or they were the ones that got laid off. They weren't really good developers. And you could kind of sit in a position as a developer for five to seven years. And when that company goes under, you try to get hired somewhere else and you realize how shitty of a developer you actually were. Like the, the standards for a lot of companies are way higher because you maybe got in and the position didn't really require a lot of you. So it gave you a false sense of confidence. But one thing good software engineers appreciate with stuff like this is this is humility. This is the start to finally like pivot and gain significant momentum in becoming a really good software engineer. Like this is the kind of realization that needs to happen with some people. And unfortunately, it's going to happen. It's going to need to happen with a lot of people, given the overdependence of AI. And this is a problem among professional experienced software engineers that are becoming worse for it. And so many of them are in denial about it, too. We're going to enter a really weird, really weird spot in software engineering. But I do think that good software engineers that take the time out and focus on that humility to spend a significant amount of time growing and being critical of what they currently know in order to grow people that actually want to be good software engineers and grind this out are going to stand out significantly among many other software engineers. And I think this is going to become more obvious over the coming years as AI creeps in to our workflow more often. It's still new, newish, right? And it's new. AI is very new in the software engineering world. Um, and I think we're going to start seeing the difference between good software engineers and bad software engineers. And we're already starting, starting to see more of a significant distinction between the two because we've had a lot of people try to jump into this industry way too quickly, trying to land that job way too quickly. And we have a significant amount of really bad software engineers that are even just trying to break into the industry right now. Some that have creeped in, but actually there are several that have creeped in that are many of which have gotten laid off. Um, but some are still in the industry, but we are starting to see like a big divide between good software engineers and bad software engineers, in my opinion. And I think we're just going to see more of a divide like that. Um, so this is an awesome article. I love that um, you've made this realization. My recommendation, if you can relate to this author, um, I highly uh, recommend you take more steps than what they're taking. Um, and like, if you have discovered a dependence, like strip AI completely, do a reset. 
and then figure out how you're going to integrate AI in a way in the future after that reset in a way where your skills and your problem-solving ability don't atrophy.